What do you like best about Barnard's Family Restaurant? Is it our convenient drive-up window? Is it our friendly, attentive service? Or is it our delicious, satisfying food? Barnard's Big Beautiful Sandwiches, stuffed with real chicken, real turkey, and Barnard's Specialty Real Roast Beef, prepared for your good health, served on a freshly baked bun or croissant. Or is it our delicious homemade soups and taste-tempting desserts? What's best about Barnard's? You decide. Barnard's Homemade Goodness, Fast Food Convenience, south of Douglas on Merle Hay Road. You're watching Channel 5. You're not an American. You're an African who happens to be an American. You have to understand the difference. We didn't come over on the, the Nita, the Pinta, and the, and, the, and the whatchamacallit. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. The biography of a controversial figure by a director who never fails to get a reaction himself. What is it about you that drives so many of my colleagues nuts? Well, I think that the media, they've been used to a certain type of black man. Bowing, scraping, always smiles. Shows a lot of teeth, shows some pearly whites. You know, and that's something that I, I just can't do. Tonight, with Malcolm X, the movie, as a catalyst, Spike Lee and some Washington area high school students review the state of race relations in America. <laughs> is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. The first and only time that I saw Malcolm X speak in person was 30 years ago on 125th Street in Harlem. I was working as a reporter for a New York radio station and I was standing with my tape recorder amid a sea of black and brown faces when Malcolm started denouncing the blonde, blue-eyed devils. I didn't want to be too obvious about it, but as far as I could tell, I came the closest to fitting that description of anyone in the crowd. Even so, there was no sense of menace toward a young white man from the people watching that day. It has often occurred to me since then that one of the things black people appreciated most about Malcolm X was his capacity to make white people feel uncomfortable. He would mock us, for example, for baking in the sun in a vain attempt to acquire a skin color that we otherwise treated with such contempt. He reminded us that globally, people of color are in the majority. He said a lot of other far more controversial things that he came later to regret. What's interesting about our memory of Malcolm X is that for the most part, we have forgotten the evolution in his thinking and attitude. Spike Lee's new film remedies that. But before we talk to him and some young high schoolers who've seen that film, a quick documentary reminder of Malcolm X and some of those who remember him. The majority of the people on this earth are dark people, they're not white people. Uh, and today, with everybody thinking in terms of freedom, uh, it only stands true that the white man being the minority has got to take his place at the end of the line. My husband agenda was to deal with those people that was not part or not included in the structure of the human rights um, institution. He was a man in search of the truth and a man who spoke what he felt to be the truth no matter what the consequences were. All of us Negroes in those days <laughs> were attracted by his oratory. He was intense, he was very dedicated, he was, comparably speaking, an extremist. He would not back down. I agreed with Malcolm that we had been sorely hurt, sorely injured, maimed, cruelly crippled by this country's racism. You are better than the white man. And that's not saying anything. That's not saying, you, you know where just to be equal with him. Who is he to be equal with? I believe, however, what he was trying to do and others were trying to do who tried to push the black community more to assert itself for its own rights would say, look, you cannot just pray to white people to get your rights. We teach you to obey the law. We teach you to carry yourselves in, in a respectable way. But at the same time, we teach you that anyone who puts his hand on you, do your best to see that he doesn't put it on anybody else. He was considered to be a very violent man when all he was saying was, if 
if someone puts a, a noose around my neck, a rope around my neck, and, and I fight to get them off of me, am I the violent one for getting them off of me, or are they the violent one for, for putting it around my neck? You know, he was pointing out these, these simple truths that, that made a lot of sense on a basic level. Malcolm X's message was emotionally very arresting, but it was patently racist. We don't want to be around that old pale thing. We don't want to integrate with that old pale thing. We don't want to sleep next to that old pale thing. So we can do without it. When the message of Malcolm was hate the white face out there, that was a bad and wrong message. And not enough people spoke out against it. There was a time when we used to drool in the mouth over white people. When Malcolm went to Mecca, he had the response, which I think all religious pilgrims want, or seek, or are supposed to seek. That is to say, revelation. During the pilgrimage, uh, I had many different occasions when I would uh, be involved with persons who would be considered white in America, who would be called white. They had blue eyes, blonde hair, and white skin. Yet they themselves uh, didn't act like American whites act toward non-whites. He got off of the racist rhetoric and he got on to uh, all human beings being people we ought to love. And that was a good message. I don't think that he lost, however, the fieriness that I felt was very important, where he expressed his view of the oppression that took place for African Americans at the time. The essence of the man remains the courage, the grace, the intelligence, and the humor of the man exists. So those who really want it can find it. Those who want less will take less. But he did live. He did try, he did sacrifice, he did dare, and he did die. What does the legacy of Malcolm X, the figure, mean to people born long after he was killed? When we come back, we'll hear from some high school students who previewed the movie Malcolm X. And we'll hear from its director, Spike Lee. This is ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Lexus. Three years ago, when we introduced the Lexus LS400, it was hailed as nearly perfect. Our engineers took that as a challenge. Presenting the 1993 LS400, the pursuit continues. Sum it up, point C, you can't afford. Point D, we don't offer. Which leaves us with point E. We're working on that one. Well, gentlemen, ladies, I trust you'll make the right choice. Is this thing Let's get MCI in here. Look at oatmeal crisp with raisins. Big flakes bursting with hearty oatmeal baked to a brown sugar crunch. Chewy, juicy raisins and crunchy almonds. So much to savor, no one can race through a bowl. Oatmeal crisp with raisins. The taste that refuses to be rushed. And here's news about oatmeal crisp. It's now oatmeal crisp with almonds. Twice the almonds for a double crunchy taste. New oatmeal crisp with almonds. I'm not sure if you know this. There are over 600,000 words in the English language. Most of us use 2,000 of them. What happened to the rest? Their own paint cans confusing the heck out of everybody. That's why I'm introducing Ed Wiggins Private Stock. It's just as good a quality of paint as you can get with the easiest instructions you've ever seen to make painting a whole lot easier and to prevent you from coming up with a few choice words of your own. Inside flat paint on sale at Menards, only $8.79. 
tomorrow. If you have a heart attack, this drug could save your life. But if you live in the U.S., forget about it. Watch World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Spike Lee has made no bones about wanting young people, especially, to see Malcolm X. We asked seven Washington, D.C. high school students to preview the movie. Then we went to their school, Woodrow Wilson High, to get their reaction. What scene in the movie had the most powerful impact on you? One thing that really sticks with me was um, at the end, when he, was in, when he went on his pilgrimage, and... Uh, when he had, to, when he finally decided, found it in himself that he could drink and eat um, with a white man or with anyone for that matter. Today, my friends are black, red, yellow, brown, and white. Malcolm, are you prepared to go to the United States? Had you States? known that about well, Malcolm before? Because uh, I must confess to you, and I, I told you all before we started, that as a young reporter, I covered one of his rallies. I never knew that he had come to that sort of realization later in life. The only Malcolm X I remember was the very angry young Malcolm X who was very anti-white, separation of the races. Had you known about that before the movie? Yeah, probably just because I've read the book. Um, but my personal opinion, I've always stressed that part, you know, whenever I talk with anybody um, and all I hear about is by any means necessary. That's all you ever really hear about from people in the community who say, oh, Malcolm X was so great. And I agree that he was a great person. But it wasn't because they don't, they don't look so much at, at his whole life. They just look at the violent part, you know. And I always try and pitch in that little part saying, well, you know, at the end he changed. You know, he realized that, that the white man is not the devil, that, you know, you can't categorize a whole group of people off of one thing. What do you think the message of that movie is today? I thought the message of the movie was to let people know what Malcolm X was really all about. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, Spike Lee, he did a very good job, I say. But, he, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I thought the movie was just so people would know what Malcolm X was really all about because, you know, people walk around today with Malcolm X shirts and hats and all kinds of things, but when you ask them, do you know what Malcolm X was really all about, they say no. You go, why did you buy this shirt? And they go, well, I like the color, and you know, everybody else is wearing It's like a fad. It's trying to show that Malcolm X you know, was just like any other leader, a human person. Mm -hmm. He had two sides to him. He wasn't just Malcolm X the leader. He was the father, the, the, the friend, uh, the, the husband. Mm -hmm. uh, that he wasn't always as focused as he was. Uh, he started off m totally different than what he ended up. Just trying to show that, that he's a real person. Uh, he's not... And he also tried to stress that he wasn't just a, as some people say, anti-white. He was really, an, I mean, uh, uh, pro-black. He just wanted black people to know where they came from and where were they at and how to get to wherever they wanted to be. Well, actually, you've led me to, to exactly where I, I hope we would come sooner or later. And that is, to what degree does this film make it easier for us as an interracial society to know each other, work together, or to what degree does it sort of heighten the tensions that have always existed in this country, heighten the injustices that have always existed? No, I don't, think I don't, I don't it, won't, it won't heighten, uh, no, I, no, no, no. it won't heighten any mm -hmm. racial tensions because there's enough racial tensions in America, real, like real, not a movie, real situations. Yeah. Uh, yes. Rodney King. Just, just yeah. yesterday or whenever I saw news, a, a, a black man was taken out of his car and beaten by the Detroit police with, with flashlights. That's real. That's real stuff. That's 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 real. This the movie uh, will not heighten racial tensions. I don't think it, it does. Helps you understand. It, it does. Uh, yeah, it makes an attempt anything. to to understand for people who are not, who are not black why there is anger in the community uh, and why America has a lot of problems that it does. At the beginning, when they he put the clips of Rodney King, the Rodney King beating, in between, it makes it very clear that the tension is still there and that this isn't just a thing of the past and the message is still applicable today. I've Absolutely. heard people say that Malcolm X was racist, but I don't think he was racist. I think that after you, well, I wasn't alive when Malcolm X was alive, but I think that if I would have lived back then, I don't think I would have been racist. I think I would have been prejudiced, but 
then how could you not be prejudiced when you look back and all you see is, you know, uh, white people did this and white people did that? Because there was a scene in the movie where somebody asked him, has a white person ever done anything good for you? And he flashed back mm -hmm. to all the white people that he'd ever associated with, and he couldn't think of anything. So, I mean, I don't like, I don't think he was racist. I just think he was prejudiced. But then again, he has a reason to be prejudiced. There's, the difference, there's no difference. The difference, there's difference, there's is, difference. is, it is a difference. A difference. The difference, a difference is, it's a big difference between. Racism is, is, you can only be racist if you're in control of a, uh, the the, uh, the society at hand. You really think I really right? don't think black people can be racist. I know we can't because be you can only be racist when you have control think, over a certain other ethnic group. I think black people can do just not have prejudiced. control over over uh, uh, over white people in America at at this but time. I making, disagree. Yeah. Making the statement that that all white people are the devil is very clearly a very racist statement. Or do you just think that's prejudice? I don't think that's racist. I think he was relating, I think I think he was relating back to the point that throughout history that whites have done nothing but oppress other people of color. Well, that's, you could go back to, you could go, you, I mean, not to cite like historical examples, but you could go back to uh, Native Americans, Native Americans uh, the slavery trade, uh, um, Spanish Inquisition. But yeah, Spanish a lot of, there's a lot of examples. But and, and him making a generalization that all all white people uh, are the devil is just stating that by nature they're uh but how they're, 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 the difference is how can I blame me for something my ancestors did? Yeah, you can't blame uh well, we can something but he wasn't he wasn't you blaming you for being the devil, he was just saying that you are. He was but, saying that the movie that makes everything better. It's so much clearer now. We'll have more of that discussion and we'll be joined by director Spike Lee in a moment. Big business. So everybody says theirs is a family car. All right, tell me it has 90 cubic feet of passenger space like a Subaru Legacy then. Enough room for five so you're close but not touching me close. Tell me it has a quiet, horizontally opposed engine like the Legacy. There's enough noise already with a family. Tell me it offers all-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes like a Legacy. A family car is for my family, not some other family I don't care so much about. Tell me I have the money. I want to know what to drive. Want to run all your software fast? Then look for the Intel Inside symbol on your next computer. It says you've got a real power source on the inside. Like the upgradable Intel 486 microprocessor. Power it up and run your software at light speed. Intel, the computer inside. Every 8-ounce bag of Kraft shredded mozzarella is made from 2 quarts of milk. How do they do that? Well, two giants pour the milk into the cheese that it gets so big that it exploded into little pieces. Every 8-ounce bag of Kraft shredded mozzarella is made from 2 quarts of milk. That's why it always tastes better than imitation shreds made with almost no milk at all. Kraft <laughs> shredded mozzarella. For all the taste, all the time. K-R-A-F-T. I love that story. Objects like these out of place, no problem with lights on. But after lights out, they're accidents just waiting to happen. Now make your home safer and more secure with Night Guide. Night Guide is a motion-activated night light. It senses movement in the room and automatically lights up. You can set it for a few seconds to 15 minutes of light, then it shuts off by itself. Night Guide is durable, made of high-impact plastic, and it's been thoroughly tested for safety. And Night Guide is so easy to install, just plug it in and forget about it. Night Guide is safe, convenient, and economical enough to have several around your home. Night Guide also makes a thoughtful, practical gift. Thousands have been sold, but Night Guide is not available in stores, so order yours now. Send check or money order to Night Guide, 4520 South 36th Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68107. Or call 1-800-800-8210 and order Night Guide by phone. That's 1-800-800-8210. Satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Order now. 
If you think your children are safe at school, you should see our hidden camera picture. This is not the inner city. It's America's heartland. Watch Primetime Thursday. Spike Lee, the maker of Malcolm X, joins our discussion as we pick up where we left off, talking about racism. In particular, the kind seen by the students in their own school. This high school here, it's a majority black high school, a smaller population white, and a smaller population Hispanic. I've been told by white students that they feel that in a lot of cases, they're, they're discriminated against because they're white. I agree with what he's saying because uh, about, he's saying, you know, that you have to have power. If you have power, then you can be a racist because um, I think he's saying that racism basically controls um, physically kind of what other people do. Um, and uh, like if you want to play basketball in gym, I can't play because I'm a skinny white boy. But I mean, anybody who's, if, if there's somebody who's black and is my size, it's assumed that they can play. And I wind up not being able to play because somebody is racist and they can control what happens to me. Ms. Uh, Mr. Lee, do you believe in separatism or as opposed to yeah. um, integration? How much of Malcolm X's beliefs do you, um, do you support? Do you, do you hold? And are you Muslim? No, I'm not, I'm not a Muslim. I don't belong to any organized religion. And uh, I do not believe every single word Malcolm X said. I mean, Malcolm X during his years under Mr. Muhammad, he felt that every single white person was a grafted blue-eyed devil. Now, I do not believe that, but I understand why black people could think like that. I understand why Mr. Farrakhan has a following he has today, because black people just look around and they can see it can't be a, co it can't be a coincidence that we're in the shape that we're in. Not to say that we could put everything at the foot, blame everything at the at the at the foot of a white America because we have to take responsibility for a lot of stuff and as we move to the 21st century we have to take a whole lot more responsibility I think Malcolm X when he, he said we have to do for self and that's what it's going to really come, come down to can I can I tell you I asked each of you what what the most powerful scene to you was I, I'm not sure this is the most powerful scene but Spike and I were talking about it on on the drive over the scene that I found the most interesting in some respects was when the, the white, blonde college student walks up to Malcolm and says, Hi, I, I've read some of your speeches and I honestly believe that a lot of what you have to say is true. And, and I'm a good person in spite of what my ancestors did. I, I just, I wanted to ask you, what can a white person like myself who isn't prejudiced, what can I do to help you and, and further your cause? Nothing. Nothing. How did, how did you guys react to that? You trying to help is, is nice and is taken into consideration. But what we're trying to do is, uh, uh, as a, as a consorted know, effort, black African people are making thing. themselves better without a white person helping us again. I don't even yeah, think he was saying that. I think he was being straight out saying, no, we don't want your help. Well, he's, he's right there at the time with what, what Malcolm X was preaching at the time. There really isn't any way that whites could help unless they're doing something, you know, because he was preaching black separatism. But and if, if, if you read the book, he says he regrets having said that to, mm -hmm. to the white co-ed. He said if he could do it again, you know, she went away crying. He said that if he could do it again, he would have told the young white co-ed that go back to your home, go back to your parents, your friends, your family, tell them not to hate. That scene that we were just talking about, um, I think it, it shows how Malcolm X, like, uh, shows him in his stages, as you said, he's like three or four different people, Malcolm X. It shows him in his, in his personality when he was, I think, when he was a very narrow-minded individual. And he didn't take into account that um, not all white people were devils. I mean, you know, there, everybody has, uh, there are lots of good people on this earth, and they can be white. What is Malcolm's message to your generation? I got the message that that we, should, we need to unite, the biggest thing, first and foremost. And at the end, where he said, you know, black people don't need to be killing each other. And that we need to unite, but with the end result in mind that we are all a human race. But first and foremost, we have to come together as a people. Uh -huh. I think there, there are several messages in the film. And that one of the messages is that, you know, be strong, stand up for what you believe in, and keep on fighting no matter what happens, no matter what anyone says to you. 
because if you don't, all of your beliefs and everything will just be will just be crushed. The movie is, a, I think, a, like a cry for black unity and to try to help to better the black community and that it's therefore by definition like speaks more to blacks than to whites. But as a black person, I already know about the experience to a certain extent. I'm right. sure I learned something today. But hopefully it will educate a lot of Caucasians, a lot of non-black people yeah. out there who don't know, who, don't know right. who have these, you know, prejudices, who have these biases, who, who have these strange beliefs that Malcolm X was just a rebel and a radical and he wanted to kill everybody, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully that'll dispel some of the myths. When we come back, some final thoughts from director Spike Lee. In case you haven't discovered what makes the all-new Toyota Corolla all-new, here are some subtle hints. Well, maybe not so subtle. Introducing the all-new 1993 Toyota Corolla. Discover Corolla again. Left, right, left. <laughs> Company. Uh, sounds hostile, Sarge. Lousy cough, sore throat. Try nice. Sugar-free nice showers your throat with medicine for icy cool relief. Ah. Left, right, left. Put your throat on ice with nice. Now save 25% on selected Goodyear all-season radios for cars and light trucks. Save 25% on Invicta GS. Save 25% on Wrangler AT and HT. That's right, save 25%. Where? Goodyear. When? Now. Panasonic presents a unique and highly evolved smooth operator. The new smooth operator 2 with float control is the only razor to unite the comfort of twin independent floating heads with the closeness of a warm, wet shave. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. The new smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic, smoother than you ever thought you would be. is on the way. Just call a Bryant dealer to the rescue and get the Plus 90i. It's the most energy efficient gas furnace you can buy and only a Bryant dealer has it. So call Bryant to the rescue. Call a Bryant and rescue me, rescue me. Say good morning to Tucson where the Old West takes on new life with people who shoot straight and talk plain. Wednesday on Good Morning America. As we wrapped up our session with Spike Lee, we talked of how much worse conditions are in our schools today than they were 30 years ago. Among the many things that Malcolm X's life demonstrates is the ability to rise above the life of drugs, crime, violence, mm -hmm. and yet we have more of it today than we have ever had, not only in, in black society, but white society, throughout American society as a whole. What do you, what do you conclude from that? We're going backwards. We're going backwards that uh, the youth, black and white, just be, just being tossed aside. And uh, for young black kids, though, I think that, especially young black men, if we're really, if we're really about Malcolm X, then we would not be doing a lot of things we're doing. And hopefully with this film, it's gonna hold the mirror up and people have to ask themselves some serious questions. Which Malcolm are they going to take as their model? The fearless young hoodlum? The rigid black separatist? Or the far more complex, devout Muslim leader? There is enough stuff there for more than just a movie. And certainly we have made heroes of far lesser men. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. If you wish a video cassette version of Nightline, the cost is $14.98 plus $3.95 shipping and handling.
Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Come on, come on, come on, let me show you what it's all about. Home Improvement shows up an hour early. Who gets the hot rod when you die? Things turn grim for Tim when Jill makes a will. My tools are mine. They don't go with anybody. I want to be buried with them. Home Improvement at a special time. Then Vinny's dream comes true. Did everyone see the fireworks or was it just me? Doogie Hauser, right after Home Improvement Wednesday. You're watching Channel 5. I love you. That, that, that gown is gorgeous. Thank you. I saw it in the window and I just couldn't resist it. 